Hello, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I want to show you how I made this fun interactive platform pop-up card inspired by the Disney movie Ratatouille. I made this one for the current Lawn Fanatics challenge inspired by a book, movie or song. And in the video I'll also be sharing my favorite way to assemble the platform pop-up or to decorate it, which is just super easy. I combined quite a few lawn fawn sets, so I'll just go over them really quick. I used Let's Barbecue, A Creature Was Stirring for the Whisk and a Spoon, and my little Remy is from A Creature Was Stirring. Screen Time, I used the little boy for Linguini. Crazy Antics for the second mouse and the cheese. Perfectly Wicked for the shelf, the books, and also the little spoon. Plan on it meal planning for the chef's hat. The little extra chef and the measuring spoons and also the knife. Den Sweet Den for the picture frame. Sprinkled with joy for the oven but I only stamped like partial, the st stamped the oven partially because I knew I wouldn't be needing all of it. Love You a Latte and I just masked up the handle of the mug so that I could use it as a cooking pot in the background because I didn't have any stamp sets like that. And for the main cooking pot I used Treat Yourself. And I just used some post-it note tape to mask off the inside uh, of the pot before stamping so that I would have a plain like cooking pot. I'm just using a Copic multi-liner to close all of the images so that my brother Scan and Cut can cut it out. And I wanted, since the movie is set in Paris, to add the Eiffel Tower to the background. I just printed it with my laser printer and I thought it would be really fun to have it like nice and shiny. So I'm using the Thermoweb iCraft Deco Foil in Pewter. I'm just adding a piece of foil over top of the laser print and it needs to be laser or toner so that the foil can stick to it. I'm using a mink foiling machine, but you can also use a laminator, I believe. And then you just run it through and you can see the pretty, super shiny foil result. I also die cut the platform pop-up add-on as well as the wonderful window die from Lawn Fawn. But I needed the backing piece to be a little bit taller than the die originally is. So I just partially die cut the top part and I just left the bottom part of the die just hanging off of my cutting plates so that I could create the, a longer panel. And then I just went over the score lines to score all the way through. Now I'm using the brick stencil by Lawn Fawn and I'm ink blending some brick details on with hickory smoke and pumice stone. And I'm just adding some spots that are a little bit darker just to give the background like a nice distressed look. And I'm also adding some hickory smoke splatters just for a bit more interest. Behind the wonderful window I wanted to have like a cloudy sky so I just hand cut a panel that was slightly smaller than the outside of the window. And I'm using the cloudy stencil and tumble glass distress oxide to add some clouds. Just going all the way around. And for a little bit more interest, since I love my splatters, I'm also adding some salty ocean splatters just to make it look nice. Then I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue to the back of uh, to the bottom of the Eiffel Tower so I could place it exactly where I want it in the window. And now I'm just using liquid glue to go all the way around the window to glue it to the uh, cloudy panel. I also added a little bit of tape to keep the heart cut out in the top of the window in place because I'll just be using Copic markers to color that. I wanted to add the name of the restaurant, which is Gusto's, to the front of the platform pop-up. So I just used some chili pepper cardstock and aged mahogany distress ink. And I'm just going over the bottom of the letters just to have a little bit of color variation. Now I'm just using my Copic markers to color all of the images. In the movie, all of the like pots and pens are copper, so I try to create a shiny copper look using uh, E11, E13, E15, and E18, which is a really reddish-brown combination, which I also like to use for foxes. And I'm just going over in like little strokes, making sure to have a little bit of sh like a shine mark in the middle, so that it looks like metal reflecting. And I'm also using the same color combo for the hair of my little linguini because he's a redhead. 
I didn't really want to make it too red on the card, but I really like those like E11 to E18 for this kind of like hair shade. And I'm just using little flicks to create sort of a texture of hair. I'm not really good at coloring hair, but I'm trying. And uh, off camera, I don't know if you can tell, I already cut out all of the images. I just used my scanning cut to cut out all of the images. And then I just kept the outline, put memo tape, like post-it tape on the back. And then I popped in all of the images again to uh, have an easier time coloring them. And that way I don't have to worry about, you know, any already colored images not cutting out straight. And then I'm using neutral grays to color the mice as well as some of the appliances. For the oven I used N7 and N5 up to N3 for the darkest parts. And for the mice I'm using N5, N3 just to get a little bit of shading on the sides of the cute little critters. And then blending that out with N1 and N0. And for the light parts of the oven I also just used the N1 and N0. I also used the same color on the um, knife up top and also the tops of the little shaker jars or like salt and pepper jars. And for the inside of the cooking pots I'm using E30 and I didn't want to add too much shading there so I just decided to add some dot details with the E13 and the E11. Also going over the little spice jars with the same combination. Just to have a little bit of variation. One just has the light dots, one has both colors and one doesn't have any. And then for my favorite skin tone combination, I'm using R21 for the cheeks, E04 as my darkest shade. And I'm blending that out with E11. Adding a little bit more just below the hairline of the E04 and blending everything out with E01 and E00. For the little display and the background behind the little chef, I'm just using E quadruple zero just to add a little bit of color there. Of course, I had to give the boy a little bit of an outfit change, so I just used a Copic multi liner to give him like a little chef's coat. So just adding a few strokes and some buttons just to make him look like a chef. Then I'm using B30 markers for my blue shade on the card. I'm using B37, B34 and B32. And I'm also using the same shades to just color in the banner that I'll be using on the front of the platform pop-up. Because I, I just thought it would be easier than to find Copic markers to make, match ink blending. So I just straight on Copic color the banner. And for my red shades I'm using R20 markers, R22, uh, R21 and R20. And I'm using the same shade on the heart because I thought it would match the patterned paper I'm using for the outside of the card, uh, kind of like basically perfectly. Then I'm using the Arteza white gel pen in 06. And I'm just adding some shine marks to all of my images and also to the letters just to make them look a little bit more cartoony because we're doing a like inspired by cartoon movie a card. And I'm just going over all of the images just to add some highlights here and there to, I don't know, I just love the look of it because it just makes them look more interesting I find. I used to be super afraid of doing it because at that point you already spend so much time coloring but the more I'm doing it the more confident I'm getting in doing it. Then I'm using the Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen in Glitter Gloss and looking back I should have done that before I added the gel pen because I had to be careful not to smudge it. Uh, but I wanted to add some, some shine to the shiny copper just to get a little bit of extra sparkle in. I cut out all of the letters out of white cardstock as well and I'm just layering that with a slight offset behind the letters, just behind the red letters, just to make it look a bit more 3D and interesting and to make sure that it stands out against the, like, um, what's it called? The gingham background. That, that was the word. Then it was time to 
like fix up my images, attach everything. I'm just shortening the little pot that goes in the back because the original stamp mug was a little bit too tall for what I wanted. So I just used my scissors to cut them off and masked, just used a white gel pen to have the nice outline. Then I'm, I just cut down the little chef's picture and I'm just gluing that behind into the picture frame so that we have Gusto hanging on the wall as well in Linguini's kitchen. And I'm just adding the little chef's hat and I just cut off the little white edge at the bottom because I always like doing that when attaching images to each other. Then he also gets a little spoon. Linguini also gets a little spoon with already some something tasty on there. And then I wanted to add a second mouse, which is uh, Remy's friend. And I'm just adding a plate of cheese. And here comes the part where I said that this is the easiest way to decorate the platform pop-up, which is to attach all of your images before you assemble the cart. I just find this is so much easier than having to glue down like vertically. And I just lay the shelves over top of each other to make sure that they line up nicely. Here you can see I'm just trying to gauge the height of the main cooking pot in the front of the cart. And I just trimmed it off. I, I didn't really bother adding a white edge at the bottom because you really won't be able to tell. And then I also cut off Linguini's feet, which is not a nice thing to do, but there just wasn't room on the cart. Then I added the little chef up top. And then it's already time to add them to the shelves as well. Adding the little pot behind them. And for my third shelf, I'm just using the oven so I didn't have to cut like a uh, more stitched hill or anything because the oven was wide enough to cover everything. I added the second pot in the background to the oven and also the little like steam coming up which I thought was just really cute. Then I wanted to decorate the wall behind my little critters so I added the window. I had to trim off like a slither on either side of the window to make it fit within the score lines, but it really wasn't much. It was really just a hair. Then I'm just adding all of the images to the back with liquid glue, just placing my shelves, making sure I have the right height. Adding all of my spice jars to the left. And since I knew I would be placing them next to each other, that's why I colored them with like a tiny little bit of variation. But not too much that it would like bug me if it was too not uniform. <laughs> then I'm adding the cooking books to the right side. And I just love the perfectly wicked stamp set because you have shelves and books and all of that, which is just so useful for scene cards. I decided not to add the knife, but went with just the spoon and the whisk. And then I also added my copper measuring cups to the bottom of the shelf. And I just tried to continue the brick pattern inside of the whisk because it would be see-through and not just plain white. Not sure how well that worked, but you know, I tried. I used the same neutral grays and since the wall was a little bit warm toned, I just went over it with W00. And I'm just trimming off the excess with my scissors. Off camera I die cut the banner and the little stars and I just used Copic markers to color both. I used uh, Y21, Y13 and Y quadruple, Y triple zero for the yellow and the same blue combinations I used before for the banner. I'm just gluing that in place with liquid glue because I knew I would be adding it straight to the front of the card. And in order to make it fold with the card, I had to add score lines to the front of the banner. I just placed the platform pop-up die cut into my little score buddy. 
and then I placed the banner. I just made little pencil marks where I needed to score and I put the banner in, scored at those marks and then I was sure that the banner would fold with my platform pop-up. Just adding it with liquid glue, making sure I have enough room to add my letters below. And since Gusto's is a five-star restaurant, I had to add the little five stars. I started with the center of the word and just used the score lines to guide me where I could place the two letters. Then I filled in the middle and to the other side of the score lines, I added the final two letters on either side. And for my platform pop-up, I made sure to use one of the T pieces and just cut along the score line. I'm just folding along all of the score lines that the die creates. And I also added some score tapes to a score tape to the flaps of the platform pop-up die cuts, just so that I could attach every uh, everything. And I also added some score tape to the two T pieces that I didn't cut off. Just making sure everything is folded nicely. I already went ahead and creased the score lines where I added the letters, just so I would know where to attach the letters. And I made sure to add them before I'm assembling the card because this way is just so much easier because the paper still lies flat. Then I'm fiddling my T piece through the opening, just making sure it's lined up straight. I'm folding along the score line, removing the backing paper and just flipping it down. Then I'm removing the second piece of score tape and I'm just folding up basically almost to the top and then attaching it to the top edge of the platform pop-up die cut. Then I'm attaching the two pieces of the platform pop-up together. I'm repeating the same thing on the other side, just placing my T-piece inside, making sure it's straight, removing the backing paper and pressing it down. I didn't have it creased all the way there. Then again, removing the second piece of paper and I'm just folding it up to the edge of the card and pressing down. At this point is where I add the platform pop-up add-on because it's so much less fiddly to add it now since the paper is still just nice and flat and you can just glue it down straight. Then I'm starting to add the decorated edges. I just added some score tape to the back of the oven and attached it to the T piece. Then I'm adding my middle tee piece and I just added the images or the hill with just some double-sided adhesive as well. Adding double-sided adhesive all the way over the middle part to make sure that the card sticks together nicely. Just pressing it together and then finally folding in the last flap. And we're almost there. Then I'm just folding the inside platform up so that I would have an easy time decorating the front. Again, just adding some eighth inch score tape, removing the backing, and then adding my little Linguini and Remy to the front. And there we go. It's so much easier to decorate all the shelves and then just add them in while you assemble than having to add all of the images onto the little shelves now. And this is just so much easier and so much quicker to do. So I hope you give it a try. I'm adding some Stardust stickles all around the card, so for some extra sparkle. And that finishes off my card for today. I've never actually participated in the Lawn Fanatics challenge inspired by a book, movie, or song, because I always just find the topic so intimidating. And when I was just browsing Disney Plus a few weeks ago, I uh, or a few days ago, I thought, oh my god, I could make a Ratatouille card. And... I had so much fun making this. This is actually my second one of those I made. I made another ver version of this on Friday. And when I went to edit the footage, it was all like fuzzy and blurry and I couldn't use it, but I really wanted to share this video. So I just did the card again. And I really, really hope you like it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll be back soon with some Easter card inspiration. And I'll see you again soon. Until then, have an amazing day. Bye!